troubles and trials and ups and downs. And uh, let's just trust the Lord uh, to meet every need because uh, we know we can depend on Him always. So uh, back there at the back, Brother Fred Wilson, brother, yeah. how about lead us in prayer and get us started tonight, please. Amen. 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 Let me remind you here in the morning, right here at Gethsemane, at 11 a.m. we'll be having visitation for Sylvain Ramey. Of course, that's Brother Rogers' sister, but Sylvain member here for years under our health decline, very faithful. So the visitation at 11 a.m. in the morning, service at 12 noon tomorrow. Uh, right here at the church. So I uh, want to make you aware of that. Like I said, Miss Sylvain is always faithful as long as uh, the Lord gave her that help. So we just had so many things going on. It's just unbelievable. And uh, But we'll get into the prayer list in a moment. Brother Steve, come on, lead us in a good song. And you sing out tonight. When I see the blood. Christ our Redeemer died on the cross, died for the sinner, paid all his due. All who receive him need never fear, for he will pass through the pass over you. When people in the media got involved with it and they said why don't we move it toward the civic center and try to do it really big and but don't think about to do it big and to make connections with some of the 
media and some of the people that would like to bring in, it couldn't take place this quickly for Saturday. So uh, don't try to come down to the church 11 o'clock Saturday morning because uh, we're not going to be doing that. I assume uh, uh, Tanya still do the uh, leap ministry then because it was planned that uh, all this other fell quickly in our lap. Uh, but again, that's going to kind of be changed. But it's still going to take place, and hopefully it'll be bigger than what we ever thought it would be. We got some people that want to get behind it, some people in the media. So anyway, but it won't be down here this Saturday. So we got to be honest, uh, uh, schools, not just schools, but restaurants and even sometimes churches. Not trying to scare anybody, but there are bad things happening in this world. And it all goes back to the sin issue. Uh, the devil is behind every bit of it. So think about it. Then when you try to expose who really is the culprit, then they want to come down on you. So it doesn't make any sense. But you know what the issue is and what the problem is. So we're still going to address it. Still going to try to make a big statement. But anyway, help us pray about that. Brother Steve, what we got lined up? Who oh, is this lady? Oh, okay. Come on around, Miss Lady. Miss Lou. so much for the outpouring of love and prayer for me and my family during my sickness and home going. 
Your prayers carried us through the last two months, and for that we're certainly thankful. We've received so many messages, cards, and offers to help. And she says, I could go on and on. I love and appreciate my church family. We do miss Mike so much, but we will see him again. Please continue to pray for me and for my family. And then a nice little note to the preacher in there so that I won't read out. Uh, just, you know, uh, Leanne's still not kind of taking messages. She's coming in, doing a little paperwork during the doing the, uh, uh, not the offering, the deposit, some of the business part of things. And that was only because she wanted to do it for some therapy. So, but she's not really taking calls. Uh, so I apologize if you've called the last few days or in the last few weeks, really, and got an answering machine. But we'll get things back to normal before long. But uh, that won't be any time the next week or two. Would you turn with me to Isaiah chapter 10 tonight? Anybody's got brand new babies or anything like that? So I've been asked about doing another uh, baby dedication. And we'll do that Sunday. Only takes about five minutes. Uh, added on to our service. So at 11 o'clock Sunday morning, uh, we'll add on a baby dedication, but we will do that in that 11 o'clock hour. Isaiah chapter 10, uh, when you find your place in the book of Isaiah, would you stand please for uh, the reading of the Word of God? I'm only going to read one verse of Scripture. I uh, will show you a few uh, and then make a challenge uh, uh, regarding that. Isaiah, I believe to be uh, uh, one of the greatest uh, of the Old Testament prophets. Uh, and here's something he says, Isaiah chapter 10 uh, and verse 27. Uh, verse 27, uh, it says this, uh, and it shall come to pass uh, in that day that his burden uh, shall be taken away from off his shoulder. Could you put an amen right there? Have you ever had a burden on your shoulders? He said that burden will be taken away and the yoke from off his neck. A yoke might be something that has somebody bound. That will be taken away. And the yoke shall be destroyed. Notice the last phrase. Because, uh, because uh, of the anointing. Uh, I want to speak to you a little bit tonight on the anointing. Uh, let me say, you know, somebody said one time, uh, Brother Sam, can you explain uh, uh, the anointing? Uh, can I say to you tonight, we might not be able to explain it uh, to your satisfaction, but let me say, without the anointing of God, the preaching's not going to be anything, the singing's not going to be anything, the worship's not going to be anything, that's not the Bible. Bible say, and I know this phrase uh, is never mentioned anymore, uh, that we need an unction. Uh, how many know the word unction? U-N-C-T-I-O-N. Uh, -N. We need an unction. This is Bible. An unction uh, from the Holy One. Uh, let's look a little bit tonight at the anointing uh, and we'll find out if we're really anointed or not. Uh, Father God, I just bow in the presence of God and I'm asking Lord that you to show up tonight on this Wednesday night. Lord, I admit uh, that I'm weary in body. Uh, so many things have been uh, going on uh, uh, to test our patience uh, and Lord so many things. Uh, I'm asking God it'll let us get under the uh, free refreshing uh, of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and Lord, meet with us tonight and help me, God, to be able to explain uh, uh, the anointing uh, of God. Have your will and way. Uh, uh, we pray it uh, 
and we ask it Father uh, in Jesus uh, in Jesus uh, uh, mighty name uh, uh, that we do humbly pray uh, and all God's people tonight loudly said what uh, amen, amen uh, and amen uh, hey let's speed ahead in time uh, uh, from the Isaiah's day uh, I want to take you now uh, uh, through the end uh, of the Old Testament uh, I want to take you through uh, that 600 year uh, silent period uh, between the close uh, of the Old Testament and the beginning of the New. Uh, I want to take you now through Matthew, Mark, and Luke, uh, and John. Uh, and now uh, we arrive uh, at the book of Acts. Uh, let me tell you something happened uh, in the book of Acts uh, that is extraordinary. Uh, I want everybody to hear me. Uh, in the Old Testament days, uh, the Holy Spirit of God would come down and come upon somebody. They'd get the job done that God had for them to do and the Spirit would leave uh, and go back to the Father. Uh, I remind you uh, of a man by the name uh, of Samson. Uh, and Samson's going along uh, uh, down this path. He wasn't going to fight. Uh, he was going to love. Uh, he was going to see his girlfriend. Uh, and the Bible tells us uh, that a lion jumped out in front of him. That'd be enough to scare you. Put an amen right there. And the Bible said the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson. And he ripped that lion in two uh, with his bare hands. Uh, but wait a minute. After that issue was over, the Spirit of God went back to the Lord. But we get to the book of Acts. Uh, and there's now something called uh, the indwelling uh, of the Spirit. See, before uh, Brother Bobby had come down, get a job done, go back to heaven. Later he'd come down on another one. Get a job done, go back to heaven. Uh, but let me say, uh, those disciples were gathered uh, in that upper room uh, and they began to pray uh, and the Holy Ghost uh, came down. Uh, this time he didn't come down for a temporary visit. Uh, he came down and moved in uh, to live inside uh, of the believer. The Bible said what? Know ye not that your body uh, is the temple, the dwelling place uh, of the Holy Spirit. Until that time, the Spirit would come on them temporarily and leave. But when you get right with God, as long as you follow the Lord and do what the Bible said, then that Spirit comes upon you. Uh, and look, you can have as much of God as you want. Uh, you, uh, hey, we need to be filled with uh, with the Spirit. Only thing problem with most of us, uh, we leak pretty badly. You say, well, Sam, what do you mean we leak badly? We get filled with the Spirit of God a little bit later, then we're back down here. Hey, you go through the book of Acts and it says, and they were filled uh, another chapter or two later, and they were filled uh, another chapter or two later, and they were filled uh, uh, with the Spirit. Let me tell you what, that Spirit uh, is the most important thing. But here's what I want you to know. Back in those Old Testament days, they didn't have the indwelling uh, of the Spirit like you and I have. Let me tell you what God told them to do. He said, I want there to be something that would be symbolic of the Holy Ghost. He said, I want you to go get some oil. And boy, God gave the directions. It had to be beaten olive oil. It had certain kinds of herbs and spices in it. And on certain occasions, they would take that oil and pour it on top of somebody's head. I want you to listen to me. When a man became king, 
One thing they had to do, uh, they had to take him out in front of everybody that would show up uh, in the entire kingdom. Uh, and they'd take that anointing oil and pour it on the head. And the Bible said it run down onto their beard. Uh, and, and listen, they recognized uh, and realized uh, that you cannot lead a country without the anointing of God. I'm here to tell you this. That's a great big old problem in Washington, D.C. And I don't know if anybody up there hardly has the anointing of God on yeah. them. See, when you want to kill babies and you can't tell the difference in a man and a woman and you're all in favor of all this craziness, don't tell me they're anointed with anything. Somebody say amen. Amen, amen. So they would anoint the king. And if that man would not humble himself down and be anointed, he was refused to be king. Let me tell you something. It's not, I'm not, not because I'm the one saying it, but because of the truth in the Bible. I don't think anybody is fit to be president of the United States unless they know God because they make them put their hand on the Bible and raise it up and take an oath. And when they're lying with their hand on the Bible, there's no way under the shining sun that God's going to bless. Yes, uh, that person is in the Bible times. Uh, they were disqualified if they were not anointed. Right. Let me take that thing another step. And every man that was going to be a prophet, he had to be anointed of God. And go out there and they'd take that anointing oil and pour it on their head. It run down all over them. And it represented the Holy Ghost did not yet come to live in the body of the believer. But it was to remind them that without God, you're not fit to be king. And you're not fit to preach the word of God or teach the word of God or even handle God's word. Let me tell you folks something that is greatly important. We got to have the anointing of God. Notice in this text that we'll get started on some things here in a minute. Verse 27 says, And it shall come to pass in that day that his burden will be taken off his shoulder, the yoke would be off his neck, the yoke would be destroyed, and what would cause that to happen? Because of the anointing. Pop up Exodus, the first verse we put in the computer. And this is the thing that thou shalt do unto them to hallow them, to minister unto me in the priest's office. And I've seen some of the other things he goes with it now. Verses 6 and 7. Thou shalt put the mitre upon his head and put the holy crown upon the mitre. And thou shalt take the anointing oil and pour it upon his head and anoint him. God said, if you go minister to me, here's what you got to do. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. God said, do it this way. Am I right? Go on, let's see the next verse uh, that we got there, I believe, in the uh, uh, on to, uh, I think, verse chapter 40. And thou shalt take the anointing oil, and listen to this, and anoint the tabernacle, and all that is therein, and shall hallow it, and all the vessels thereof, and it shall be holy. Not only did they anoint people, but they anointed things. Uh, how many of you remember the tabernacle? Long before there was a temple, a permanent structure. Let me get back down here. It's like the main body of our church, uh, excluding the wings. Uh, they had something just about this shape, somewhere about this size. Uh, the outer wall was nothing but skins of animals uh, uh, tied together. And it made kind of a wall. 
Oh, I, and you come in the double doors back there, just about where Sister Joan Ritchie is seated right there. They had the brazen laver and the brazen altar. Come on a little further. And he got on up here into the sanctuary. Then they had the holy of holies. Uh, there he said, not only do I want the prophets, uh, I want them to be anointed. I want you to go down there and anoint the tabernacle. Everybody look this way. You say, how did they hold those animal skins up that they made a wall? They sewed them together. Let me tell you, there's 60 posts. Went all the way around. 66 and a zero. And it had a crossbar. Everybody get this picture. You're inside the tabernacle, and here's a... a, 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 a what am I trying to sell? Somebody done jumped ahead of me. They know where I'm going on this side. They had 60 of these posts with crossbars. You know what they're looking at? They're looking at 60 crosses. And on the top of that uh, post, uh, there was a half of a shekel of silver. You take a half a shekel, multiply it by 60, there's the 30 pieces of silver, there's the crosses, there had to be the blood shed, there's the altar back there with the fire rolling. God said, don't you put that fire out, don't you let it go out. Listen to me, church, the anointed of God is the fuel you need to keep the fire going in your heart. Hey, look, you're not going to have a fire going in a fireplace uh, if you don't have some fuel. You're not going to keep that automobile running uh, if you don't have some fuel. And we need the anointing of God to keep the fire in our heart burning brightly. Somebody say amen. He said, you want to break your burden? You want to destroy the yoke, the things that had you bound? He said, get anointed by the Lord. Show me verse chapter 61 now of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto me. He sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. How are you going to do all that? How When it said preach, don't get hung up on that word preach thinking it's only talking to me and one or two others. That word preach just simply means to proclaim. You're supposed to proclaim the gospel in your way just as I proclaim it here this way. And he said you got to be anointed. Uh, see, the devil will fight you from witnessing. How many know what I'm talking about? You decide you're going to go out and tell somebody about the Lord, and all of a sudden you get bold, and you're ready to go do it, and you get out there, uh, blah, 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 blah. your knees knock together, and your lips, blah, 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 and you freeze up at the mouth. Uh, let me tell you what, when the anointing of God is on you, you're not going to be afraid of any man. Bad you're bad. not going to be afraid of any demon. Because greater, listen to me, church, Greater is he that is in you than he uh, that is in the world. So that anointing is not just for the preacher. It's not just for the prophet. It's not just for the king. But he said, everybody that ministers unto me. Let me say, you're a minister. You're a minister. Ma'am, you're a minister. All of us that are saved, we're ministers. Now let me ask you. Do you have the anointing of God on you? Do you have that fuel? Oh, I'm not talking about me. To, now, there's nothing wrong. We do this a lot of times. Uh, I got this oil in the back of the pulpit. James chapter 5 said, If there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them pray over them, laying hands on and anoint them with oil. And a prayer of faith would save the sick. Nothing wrong with that. But I'm not talking about getting a bottle and pouring something on your head. I'm talking about a greater anointing than that. Have you been anointed by the Spirit of God? Call Him Spirit of God. Call Him Holy Ghost. 
Whatever you want to say, just call them. Amen. I'm going to ask you a question tonight. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm going to ask you seven. Number one, are your lips anointed of God? Are your lips... Uh, let me give you a pretty good indication. When you were out in the parking lot, if you were cursing and snorting and saying filthy, ungodly things, don't come in here and say, oh, hallelujah. <laughs> All you're doing is blowing smoke out your mouth. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Hey, look, folks, we got to have our lips anointed. Before we can preach, before we can witness, before we can testify, we need the touch of God. Hey, let me tell you, uh, anybody that knew me back in the day before I got saved and even after I first got saved, I was about as shy and as backwards about speaking in the crowd. I'd be, I, hey, I was so, so shy, I wouldn't even lead in silent prayer. <laughs> That's right. That's pretty bad when you won't lead in silent prayer. Hey, man, but I'm going to tell you what. I remember the first time God got hold of me, and I went back to the old home place uh, where I grew up. I still had a key. Nobody was living in that house. Woo! I went in there, and I got down on my face, and I was scared to death. I was going to preach my first message on a Sunday night. I was scared. I was nervous. I, I said, Lord, I, unless you anoint me, I'm going to make a big old mess. I, I'm going to make a fool out of myself, and I'm going to hurt the cause of Christ. I, let me tell you, I'm not saying anything about me. I'm nothing. I'm a nobody, but I'm a nobody with a great big God. And when I prayed, I, that anointed came upon me. I preached on night number one, just like I am right now. You know what God showed up? I'm here to tell you right now, it's nothing that I could ever do, but it's the anointing of God. When these people come up here and say, hey, let me tell you, you can tell when the anointing of God's on somebody. Am I right? Now, I know some people, please don't get mad at me. I know some people, man, they're professional. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you know what I mean? Sound like they belong in some opera, but it ain't grand old. <laughs> it's the New York oh, Philharmonic yeah. Opera. Hey, you know, I've known people who got all that perfection, and even though they might be saved now, and they might sing and hit every note perfectly, but it's as dead as it gets. But I'd rather have see old some country fella come up here with a guitar, have the anointing of God. I remember one time years ago, I went to a little old country church and over in Georgia. And I, I, one of the first revivals I ever did 40 years or so ago, and man, I, I got in there, and they had a piano that was totally out of tune. <laughs> I mean, I could tell the way they're bucking around on it. I'm not a musician, Brother Steve, but I might not know how it's supposed to sound, but I know how it ain't supposed to sound. That thing was all messed up, out of <laughs> tune, and I thought, Lord, we really going to have us a time this week, being out of tune, and you know, everything. But let me tell you one thing. That old piano out of tune with the anointing of God. Woo! Amen. Even if it's out of tune, if it's got the anointing of God, that old gal ran back and started singing, playing that thing. I'm here to tell you right now, the glory of God fell in that place. I'd rather been there than up with these high dollar big shots anytime because the anointing of God was upon it. So it's not about perfection. I might butcher a little bit of the King's English and some of these folks that come up and sing, some are real singers. Some might not be so professional, but hey, if they got the anointing of God on them, it's something. Old brother right. Steve and I every now and then we'll reminisce. Steve's been with me a long time. We're out there in that old front building out there. 
Man, we get thinking about people and talk. Oh, you remember so and so, remember so and so. And every now and then we'll, we'll mention old Brother Mac. Some of y'all been around here, you remember Brother Mac. Brother Mac, if there's such a thing as carrying a tune in a bucket, <laughs> I think he was missing his bucket. But I'm here to tell you, and I mean no disrespect, that old brother had such a connection with God. He loved God. His face shined all the time. He'd come up and he'd say, I've had a request tonight, but I'm going to sing anyway. <laughs> but let me tell you, that old brother would get to sing it. People would go to shout it. The Spirit of God would fall. Was it because he was so professional? No. Was he trained at the Juilliard School of Music in New York City? Not hardly. But let me tell you, when the anointing of God gets in it, you got everything you're going to ever need when you got the anointing of God. Somebody right. say something. I'm here to ask you right now. Before you can witness, before you can sing, before you can teach, before you can preach, Whatever it is, you're going to have to have your lips anointed by the Spirit of God. Are your lips anointed? Number two, we're going to have to have our minds anointed. I'm going to tell you something. Not, I'm not throwing rock at anybody, but none of us are as smart as we think we are. That's right. Some people really think they're smart. <laughs> Well, they can't be if they thought that. Yeah, right. Everybody else knows that they're not. But you know what? When the anointing of God comes on them. Let me tell you something. I know some of you can attest to this. You know, I, I'm, I'm not one that try to put on a show or, or brag or anything. But you know what? I, I got in the Word and studied the Word and took it seriously. And I remember I scared myself to death one time. My mind was anointed and I didn't even realize it. Let me tell you what I'm saying. I got up there and I, hey listen, I had not practiced any of this. I had spent hours on end and all of a sudden I said, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your body living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable serve, and be not conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And I said, what did I just say? <laughs> it scared me. Let me tell you what it is. The Holy Ghost will bring it to your mind. Yeah. I have been studying, but I hadn't sat down and tried to learn one line and then the next line. I just read it and went on and all of a sudden when your mind gets anointed, he'll bring verses by. And some of you know what I'm talking about. You'll be talking to somebody, witnessing to somebody, talking about the Lord and bang, just out of nowhere, some verse that you haven't thought about pops up. You know, that didn't just happen by accident. Mm -hmm. You know what? That's an anointed mind. That's yeah. not the Bible say, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Mm. First, we've got to have our lips anointed. And we've got to have our minds anointed. You don't understand this book. You can't apply man's principles to a holy book. You've got to have the anointing of God. And then number three, you got to have your heart anointed. What do you mean most of them have your heart anointed? Well, let me put it to you like this. Some people can get up and maybe they got their mind anointed. Maybe they know and quote a bunch of scriptures. And maybe they, they might have a good delivery. Maybe their lips have been anointed. But the heart's not anointed. Right. It comes out, it's like a bunch of gobbledygook. It doesn't come out with compassion. See, let me tell you what I heard a old preacher say one time. He said, you know, there really is a hell. And you need to preach it, but don't preach it like you're glad somebody's going there. <laughs> he said, you got to have compassion. 
Yeah. You can tell when somebody's got their heart in it versus somebody just doing it. See, you can get too mechanical. What do I mean by too mechanical? I knew one fellow one time in back, not our Bible college, but where I went to Bible college a hundred years ago, fellow, he would just almost memorize a message. And he'd get up and have it memorized, and he'd, but it went over flat. You know why? His heart wasn't anointed. That's you know, every now and then there's got to be some. I, oh, I'm not all about feeling, you know that, but there's got to be some feeling in it. You got every now and then. Don't you agree? And if it's real, every now and then something's going to touch you on the inside. And let me tell you what it is that's having your heart that's right. anointed. Yes, sir. Don't be somebody so stiff and starchy and so professional that you don't want God to touch your heart. That's right. Hey, I'd, I'd rather forget all about every thing and just let God take over any time. But we got to have some compassion. Number four, we got to have our ears anointed. You, what do you mean, most of have your ears anointed? Let me give you something. Most of us, we talk on some Sunday nights about praying. But let me tell you what, after you pray... Don't you jump up and run off. You stay put and listen. Let God answer you. Yeah. And unless our ears are anointed, God is not going to speak in an audible voice like you're hearing me speak in right now. But boy, you know it when God speaks to your heart. You know it without a doubt when God has spoken. So I'm saying it pretty much symbolically, meaning the ear. But you've got to be anointed. To, does not the Bible say to him that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, listen, what the Spirit saith to the churches. That's the problem. We're hearing what everybody else is saying, but we don't have our ears anointed. We're not listening to God. Well, you listen to God, you'll come out on the top side every time. Let me say number five. We got to even have our eyes anointed. You know, on one occasion God said, you need to have your eyes anointed with salve. You know why? When you can look out and see people as souls and you can see the sin in the world and it bothers you. The Bible said Jesus lift up his eyes and he looked out and he saw the multitudes as sheep having no shepherd. He saw them through eyes of compassion. You know what? We look out here and the world's going to hell and you know it. And you know sometimes we look at it and we see that much. But we don't see it with eyes of compassion. That bunch of idiots. Somebody needs to take them out. We've probably all said things like that. But you know what? If you got your eyes anointed, you see them in the pitiful condition that they're in. See, when they have Jesus, everything will change. The problem in every case out here, when it's been a school shooting, it, it was a sin problem mm -hmm. every time. The Spirit of God, if you got your ears plugged into God, you won't listen to Satan. Mm -hmm. If anybody dare says that they heard a voice told them to go do it, God didn't tell you to go do anything that His Word already says not to do. And then, number six, we got to have our hands anointed. Sometimes, folks, can I be honest? It's worth serving God. But you know what? You don't mind when you work uh, on your job, you work at fiberglass, you work at Michelin, you work in any other plant or place. You don't mind doing it because you know the reward will be worth it. Amen. Let me tell you, there's no reward any better than God's That's reward. Right. Amen, brother. When He rewards us at the end of this journey, the Bible said we're going to get these crowns. We'll in turn take them off, cast our crowns at the feet of Jesus. We'll be shouting hallelujah, worshiping the true and the living God. 
But folks, uh, to get those rewards, you got to have your hands anointed. It's time that we get out there and get some kind of work done for the Lord. Whatever it is. If it's boxing up tracks, Ricky. If it's going on visitation. Knocking on doors. Whatever it is. Working with the kids in vacation Bible school. Those of you that have been coming down here for the last... Same like 14 years working on vacation Bible school stuff. It's been about two or three months. It seems like I've been working on it 14 years for just this year's Bible school. But you know what? you got to have your hands anointed. you got to be willing to do some work. Russell, I know it's not always easy. I, and, and I'm not here to brag on Russell, but you might not know this, but Russell, of course, is a construction worker. You might know that. But what you might not know, he's working in Commerce, Georgia. Am I right, brother? And drives back for Commerce, Georgia every day and is here on Monday night to do that addiction ministry, trying to help them, these people that are seeking the truth to help get them off of drugs. Well, you got to have your hands anointed or you'll give up. Right. And to be back on Wednesday night, be back here again tomorrow night for Bible college, we got to have that anointing that makes us want to work oh, yep. for the Lord. Hey, have you been anointed? I'm not talking about with a bottle of oil. I'm talking about you have been anointed with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit of God. And the last thing I'm going to say to have room for our, our, our prayer list tonight, we need to have our faith anointed. What do you mean, Brother Sam? Well, first of all, we got to walk in a straight, narrow path. Some people, to save their life, they can't walk straight for anything. I'm not talking about walking crooked physically. But I mean spiritually, some people can't walk straight. They'll go two or three weeks and then they'll mess up. They'll get back in it, they'll go a little bit again, and they'll mess up again. Let me tell you tonight, the cure for that, you just get your feet anointed. That's it. And you can be able to walk in the straight and the narrow path. It'll help us keep on going for the Lord. The Bible says... That the feet of those that give the gospel are beautiful in the sight of God. You know what? The feet have got to be anointed of God. Let me ask you tonight, and I want you to be honest with me. Have you been anointed? Not maybe not with this bottle of oil right here. But we see that oil, when they did it in Exodus and all the way through Isaiah and all the way. That was symbolic of the real anointing that was going to come in the book of Acts when the Holy Ghost came. Are you anointed? If not, tonight, listen. You know the reason why some people it's hard to serve God? They're doing it out of obligation instead of out of love. And they're doing it without the anointing of God. Whatever it is that you do, but the Bible says do it all to the glory of God. Hey folks, we just got to keep on keeping on. And the way that we're going to last for the long haul, it's going to take the anointing of God. If you feel like you've laid down a little bit, I'm going to ask you tonight, find you a prayer spot and get filled back up. Because when that anointing is all over you, It'll make all the difference in the world about serving God. Have you been anointed? Our Father God, I just bow in your presence tonight. And Lord, I pray that we've seen and understood that the actual anointing of oil in the Old Testament days on a king or on a prophet was symbolic of the anointing that would come in the book of Acts of the Holy Spirit. I'm just asking God that we all look at our lives and make sure that we are anointed of God. Have your will and way, God. We commit it to you. We ask it in Jesus. In Jesus.
so smart in there. That's Janet and Steve play for us. Would you stay at the church? Whatever church officers are not in the back working with kids tonight, would you come down and find a prayer spot? Lord, anoint me. Fill me with your spirit that I can be what you want. Gary Rawlinson back. He has had hip replacement and been out for a little while, but his request also tonight that his wife is leaving to go to the Philippines on Friday. Her younger brother, they're Filipino anyway, and her brother uh, still lives in the Philippines, her younger brother. So we want to pray for that family and specifically Gary's wife traveling to the Philippines on Friday. On our regular prayer list, pray for our military. Also, Ricky's mama, uh, Miss Martha. Also, Joan Roberts, Ed Pelkey had, had a scare with his heart and uh, did a cath, and, but he's back at home. Uh, Al Todd. Also, Jeremy osmith has been in the hospital since what day for yesterday, I believe. I went by today and he was trying to eat some hospital food, so he must have been some better. Amanda Elliott, Eddie Vickery, Chad Vickery. Also, Bobby and Brenda Adams. And Brenda is home from the hospital in Athens. Rick and Dorothy Owen, Shirley Coleman. Mary Cornette, uh, Ron D. Rosa, Brenda Webb out of the hospital, Linda Goddard, also Sherry Wood, and then their mama, Miss Grace. And then Lincoln Montgomery has surgery. Dana Brock, Tommy Suttles, Jerry Hammond's granddaughter, Kate Stamps, Christy Whit, Misty Burdett, Greg Simmons, Juanita Bell, Junior and Wanda Hart, uh, Joyce Hardy, Paul Dyer, uh, Sherry Fagan, Christine Costello, uh, Trinity Smith, Gene Pruitt, Gabriel Simpson, 
Wanda Burdett, Richard Hudgens is here somewhere. I think Richard's got some hand surgery. Is that the Mara brother? I, I was thinking so. And then Brian Lewis, Francis Lewis. And then we've got Sam Gillespie, uh, Donnie Brock, Brenda Brooks, Sammy Davis, Martin Wells. Mickey Feltman was here and got sick and had to leave before service time. Ralph Partain, Sandra Vickery, Richie Tyler, Denise and Austin Fortune, Lane Thompson, a one-year-old, I think it says with seizures, Susan Reeves, Gary Howell, Butch and Jonathan Moore, Curtis Pless, Ann Blair, Corbin Eady, and what did you tell me happened to his eye? A bumblebee got him in the eye. Also, uh, Ann Blair, Lisa Hart, Sandra Powell, Linda Tillman, the Moore family, the whole family, Kate Stamps, Mark Strickland, Ray Johnson, Joe Hall, George Bell, uh, an unspoken, Al Crump, Jerry Williams, Georgia Schick, down in her back, Barbara Messer, Melanie Allen, uh, Jewel Evans, I uh, believe it's Amy Winchester, uh, Dawson, Lane McElrath, uh, Gabriel Shaw, and that would be Barbara Fields' grandson. I understand he's had maybe another seizure or something like that. I know he's had some of those. Uh, Michaela Davis, Terry and Jerry Shaw, Christian, Christian Whitten, the Lowey family, Jimmy Smith, and now the family's in bereavement, the Ramey family as we have Sylvine service here in the morning. Again, visitation at 11, the service at 12 noon, the Hill family, the Ritchie, the Smith, the Broner, the Dotson, and uh, that one is going to be upcoming, the Dotson Memorial Service. The Bloom slash Allen family and the Hammond family. A lot of requests tonight. What about unspoken? I've, I've had several ask Sister uh, Jan. A lot of people didn't know details, but a while back she had a bad deal come up with her eye and they thought they were going to have to do emergency surgery. They put it off and things are better, but she's still having a few issues. And She had asked earlier tonight that we would anoint her. So if Jan and Rayford want to come, our brother right here, uh, he asked me tonight about being anointed. So uh, I'm going to ask them just to come on to the altar, those that do want to participate. James chapter 5, I quoted it earlier about if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church and pray over them, anointing them with oil and the prayer of faith save the sick. I'm going to ask our deacons and trustees, advisory council, any other preachers, anybody really that would want to join us, you are more than welcome as we anoint them and pray over them. Let's look to the Lord. Our Father God, we bow tonight in your presence. And Lord, as we said earlier, we know that the oil is symbolic of the Spirit of God. Lord, there's nothing magic in this bottle right here. But Lord, the faith of your people brings victory. I ask that these both might get excellent word and good things come their way. Father, we know you're an awesome and a mighty and a powerful God. Be with them each and bless them. Give them the desires of their heart that good come their way. And Lord, that they might be blessed with health and strength. God, as they can continue on and serve you in the days ahead. Lord, forgive us of where we fail you. I pray for Brother Roger's family, for Sylvain's family, God. Be with them. We pray for all these on the prayer list that you'd meet the need of each and every one of them. Have your will and way. 
God, we commit it to you. Bring victory in our lives. And God, we might rec recognize and realize how much we need the Spirit of God at work in our lives. Be with every one of these requests, these on the prayer list, these, God, that were spoken, those that were unspoken, whatever the need, we commit them to you. Asking God for your will and way. Send us out of here tonight with the touch of God. We pray it. We ask it for it. In Jesus. In Jesus. Mighty name that we pray. And all God's people tonight say it. Amen. Amen. We'll let that serve as our closing prayer tonight. Pray for all these on the prayer list that God's blessing and touch be upon them. And remember the service for Sylvain, the upcoming service for the Dotson. We'll let you know more about that as time goes on and any others. God bless each of you.